Hello and welcome back to video 3 for topic 8 programming and this time we're going to be looking at nested statements. This is for the IGCSE and O level computer science course. Um, as you can see here, understand and use nested statements is what the specification is wanting. So let's begin. Using nested statements, what does that mean? Well selection, things like if and case statements and um, iteration statements for example the for and the while loop can be nested one inside the other well this reduces the amount of code that is needed and makes it simpler for a programmer to test their programs for example I've got a couple of if statements here we've got if then a condition um, the statements to execute if the condition is true will return another if statement and then again if that statement is true um, a condition is executed and then we end of the nested if statement and then we end the initial if statement so we've got an if statement inside another if statement what does that mean well here's an example in python um, there are two types of loops which are the for loop and the while loop which you should be familiar with from a, from a previous video um, using these loops we can create nested loops in python so here we go nested loops mean loops inside a loop for example a while loop inside the for loop and the for loop inside another for loop so here I've got for i in range 2 so do this twice print whatever's in i okay so print this but one within that we've got for j in range 10 to 13 print j inside an inner loop so we've got the outer loop and then we've got the inner loop what does that mean so I've opened this program in Python and I've just put some comments in to sort of explain it a little bit better. So for i in range is 2. So there's two items yeah, in this first loop, in this first range, 1 and 2. And it's going to print the first item in the first loop, this one here. Print the first item. And then it's going to move on to for j in range. okay, And this gives us a range from 10 to 13. And then it's going to print each of these. But it's going to, it's not going to, it's, not, it's going to go up to but not including so it's going to go 10 11 12 and then stop and then it's going to repeat this because there are two items in this first loop so it's going to repeat this bit twice okay but it's going to count one and two here or zero and one because it's going to, python always starts with a zero so if i run this so i've run this and as you can see the first item in the range is zero and then it's going to go 10, 11, 12, not including 13, it goes up 2. And then it's going to go again, the second item, which would be 1. And then it's going to repeat this, 10, 11, 12. Then it's going to stop because there were only two items in the first range. So that's another example of a loop inside a loop, a nested loop. So I'm running a timetable program, and I'll show you this in Python. So I'm going to run an outer loop from 2 to 6. Okay, so for timetable in range 2, um, comma 6 in the parentheses, and then printing inside the outer loop, running in a loop from 1 to 10. So for multiplied by in range 1, comma 11. Okay, so it always stops sort of 1 before. So I've opened this program up in Python, and as you can see, it's only 1, 2, 3, 4 lines of code, all the rest are comments. So if I run this, and try and explain it as, we, as we've gone on. Timetable in range two to six. So we've got the twos, the threes, the fours, and the fives. Remember, it doesn't go, it doesn't include six, it goes up to six when we're using the ranges like this. But then what, what do we have? Well, we've got the multiplied by, and that's what these things are here. One, two, three, four, all the way up to 10. So for range 1 to 11, remember we're not including 11, it goes up to but not including. So what we're going to print out, I'm just going to move this out of the way a little bit. So for timetable in range, so print the timetable, okay, so it's anywhere between 2, 3, 4 and 5. Then print the string, which is basically the star, the multipl multiplication sign. Then print out from the for loop multiplied by, okay, and again we've got a range from 1 up to but not including 11 then print an equal sign and then multiply both the times table and the multiplied by together so 2 times 1 is 2 2 times 2 is 4 
and we carry on. 3 times 9 27, 4 times table, and then finally down to the 5 times table. Okay, so 4 lines of code and we've generated um, all of those numbers. Now what I could do, I could start with a range starting with maybe um, a 10 and go up to 15 and if I run this again, run module, click OK and as you can see we've got 10, 11, 12, 13 and then we come up to 14. Okay, And again we could up this number if we wanted to um, to change that. So that's a lovely way, four lines of code for creating a multiplication calculator. Okay, we'll move on. In this next example, we've got um, a nested while loop to build a times table grid. And here we've got three nested loops, as you can see here. So my loop equals one. And then while my loop is less than or equal to one, multiplier equals one. While, and then inside that, while multiplier is less than or equal to 12, the last number equals one. Well, what does that mean? Well, while last number is less than or equal to 12, so we're going to do some counting, print my loop, whatever this is, times the multiplier, times the last number, and then when it's done all that, we're going to, um, we're going to end, we're going to finish, okay? But last number is our counter, whereby it's plus or equal to 1. And then the next example, I'm going to use um, a while loop and a for loop, but this time I'm going to do it from lists. I'm going to, I've got two lists here. I am and we are in list one, um, two strings, I am and we are, and then three strings in list two. I am going to the gym, eating dinner, wearing sunglasses. So we're looking, we, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create something called list size underscore size equals len list two. So len two has got a list size of three. There's three items in there. And we did this in, I think, in the previous video where we're looking at um, string variables. Where we're looking at strings. Where we covered briefly lists and then working out the length of list, which basically counts the items in a list. That's what this len function here is short for length. Okay, so the looping program itself, the nested loop, for items in list one, okay, which is two, I am and we are, print, and then start the outer loop. Okay, so I'm printing start the outer loop. I set a count to zero. Now, while the count is less than list two size, and we know that list two size is three, yeah, one, two, three, while count is less than list size, print item, yeah, first the first one being I am, and then list two count. So it'll print I am going to the gym, I am eating dinner, I am wearing sunglasses. Count equals count plus one. So it's going to add one to the count. It's going to go round again. Okay, then it's going to add count equals count plus one, and then it's going to print end for loop. And I've just printed a space in there, but we're still inside the loop. So now we've got to do the second item for item in list one. So we're going to do we are and it's going to go around again and do exactly the same thing. We are going to the gym, we are eating dinner, we are wearing sunglasses. Print the end loop, print the space, but then it will stop because we've reached the point where we've got we've we've printed both items. I am and we are from list one. So it stops. Okay? So that's what you'll get there. And then for the final example, I've done something quite complicated. Well, it looks complicated, but it's, it's not really. I'm going to make a kaleidoscope and I'm going to use the turtle um, library which you might be familiar with inside Python, so Python turtle. So we're going to make a kaleidoscope using nested loops in Python and we're going to, co and we're going to have a combination of four loops and drawing commands to create a repeating pattern of shapes and colors and here is our example. Again this looks quite complicated with these two five fives in but I will explain that within Python. So here we go. Okay, so now I'm in Python. You can see that this code will draw a kaleidoscope pattern with six repetitions and six-sided shapes um, using a range of colors. 
Um, you can adjust the size of the kaleidoscope and the number of sides and repetitions to customize the pattern. That's the program I wanted to create. So I've imported Turtle. Um, I've set up the Turtle so it's um, fastest speed. Um, it'll hide the Turtle once it's finished drawing it. And I'm using a color mode of, um, I'm using an 8 bit color mode system, 255 colors. I'm going to set the size of the kaleidoscope to be 200. I'm going to set the number of sides of each shape in the kaleidoscope to be 6. I can change this. And the repetitions um, to be 6 as well. And then this is the bit that contains the nested loops. For R in range, the repetitions. I'm going to loop to create the number of repetitions in the pattern. And then for I in range, I'm going to loop to create the number of sides in the pattern. Okay, so I've nested the, the sides inside the rep. And then for the sides, I'm going to set the, col the turtle color for all the items in the range to have 255 colors um, divided by the number of sides. So I've created a loop for the number of sides. Now I'm going to set the color of the turtle using the current iteration and the total number of sides, i.e. I times the 255 colors. Okay, then I'm going to fill the shapes. Then within the loop again, I'm going to loop to create the shape. And this, this little bit of code here inside this final for loop is the one that's going to draw the shape, moving the turtle forward, turning the turtle around, filling the shape, turning it around again, and finally turning it around again. Okay, this is going to re rotate the entire pattern to create the kaleidoscope effect, and you'll see that in a moment. And as I've just said, we're going to turn the turtle off once we've finished. So if I run this, you'll see, so I run the module, and we've got this six-sided shape that's rotating round and round and round and round and round until it finally stops. Okay, so that is the final bit in terms of nested loops. So a loop to draw the shape to set the number of sides, a loop to, for the repetitions, and a loop for filling and drawing the shape. And we've got a beautiful little kaleidoscope effect, well, a rather strange kaleidoscope effect. Okay, that is the end of nested loops. I hope you found that interesting. Um, thank you very much indeed for watching, and I will see you next time. Please continue to ask questions, leave your comments, hit notifications, and please subscribe. And finally, if you wish to buy me a coffee, I'd be truly grateful. Please visit buymeacoffee.com forward slash learning zone.